Hello, everyone, and welcome inside another edition. It's the Adam Jones Podcast, Season 3, presented by the Baltimore Banner. I'm Jerry Coleman. He's a former five-time All-Star Adam Jones back in Barcelona. More on that later in the podcast today. In Episode 67, we'll be joined by former Major Leaguer Matt Holliday, a seven-time All-Star 2007 NL batting champ. I believe he has a son that plays for the Orioles. You might have heard of him. Adam and I will also talk about the rash of arm injuries going on inside the MLB. Is it due solely to the pitch clock? I think Adam will have an opinion for that. Plus, he made a quick trip to the U.S., as I just mentioned, for Jackie Robinson Day. We'll recap his whirlwind tour of America and Barcelona. And someone will qualify for a Lido's Pizza $50 gift card in our Socially Speaking segment. But let's begin. You know how we do it. Brought to you by our friends at Jimmy's Famous Seafood, where we saw Derrick Henry enjoying his free crab cakes this week. Recently spotted there, he is former all-star and the father of Jackson Holiday. Now a big Orioles fan, he's Matt Holiday. Matt, thanks for being patient and being on the podcast. We appreciate you being here. Speaking of patience, what was it like traveling around, watching Jackson in anticipation of that first major league hit as you go through Fenway and then Oriole Park at Camden Yards? Yeah, it was a great time. Obviously, um, super excited uh, for Jackson to, to get a chance to, to make his major league debut and, and uh, to do it in Boston in such a historic uh, stadium was a lot of fun. And, and uh, you know, you, you want to get that first hit out of the way because you can kind of get that monkey off your back and then and relax a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, it, it took him a few days uh, to get a hit and, and, you know, it felt like he had some good at bats, just couldn't find a, a, a hit. Um, but you know, it, it's it's uh, it's one of those things. Baseball is hard, as as you guys know. Uh, hitting is is very difficult, particularly nowadays. Um, to roll out there against some of the the guys that he, he faced so far has has been very challenging. And so, um, I, I think he's starting to settle in. But it's been it's been a great week. I mean, obviously, you want the the hits to come and you, and you want the production to come. But uh, they're winning games. Uh, you know, he's he's playing really good defense and and. Um, but uh, it's been really fun for me to get a chance to watch watch Jackson play in the major leagues and, and do what he loves to do. And, and so uh, all in all, it's been great. Uh, just hoping that, that he kind of you know, as a dad, you have no control. You just you want him to get hot and, and start to, to swing the bat good and, and start to contribute offensively as well. This week, you entered a really cool and selected group of father son players, father son duos. And I just read the book of the father son duels with the Harrisons and many other Griffies. How has that been as a dad, just like emotionally? Because you're not far removed from baseball. Most of us that are far removed are our kids, especially our teenagers, young teenagers. Yours is in the major leagues. How has this been like just as a father, just like my son's really here? Yeah, I mean, it's been surreal. Uh, you know, I, I think that the thing that I, I told Jackson, I said, well, I mean, if, if I had known you were going to get there this fast, I'd have tried to stick around a, a few more years and, and uh, try to pull off the, the King Griffey Jr., King Griffey Sr., uh, you know, uh, situation where we got to play together. But in uh, and, and, and joking, um, it's been cool. I, I think that, um, you know, when you talk about the Griffeys and the Harrisons and you talk about uh, the Uptons and, and all the families, the Ripkins and, and all these families that have been able to have, uh, you know, multiple family members in the major leagues. It's it's be, it's pretty cool to be part of, of, of that select uh, a group of people. But, um, you know, like I said, I, I, I'm just happy. I'm proud of him. Uh, I'm, I'm more proud of, of who he is as a person and how he handles himself and, and his humility <clears throat> and, and just uh, who he is as a, as a, as a young man and, and who he's turning into be. And, and uh, um you know, as a father, that's that's what you hope for. You you, you hope that that you've raised him to to go out and, and be a, um, a a good kid and and somebody who honors um, the Lord and his his family and and how he plays the game and and how he handles himself around media and kids that want his autograph and all those things. Um, I, I think is for me is is the thing I'm most proud of. How do you properly push your kids? I'm a father of a 10 and eight year old. And of course I want them to be the greatest they can be. How do you properly push your kids in the right direction? Mine's play basketball and, and mm. football, soccer, because mm. we live in Barcelona. So how do you just give them the right advice and the right tutelage? Yeah, I think for me, it was, it's all about, um, I, I always told the boys, um, if, if it's your passion and you want to practice, I'm out there all day, I'll throw to you all day. But it's not my idea. It's got to be your idea. It's got to be what you want to do. And so I, I think that that it always in, isn't going to match up where, um, you know, your passions are the same as your kids' passions. And 
Um, but you know, in, in, in my case with, with Jackson and Ethan, the two older ones, um, they love baseball. They grew up around it. They grew up, um, you know, at the park in the locker room. Um, and so they love to practice baseball. And so I wanted to just promote that and push that as far as they want it to go um, and have them understand what it's going to take. If, if their dream is to play major league baseball, um, you don't just get to dream it. Like there's, there's, there's the work that goes with it. And, and I think that that's, that's the one thing with, like I said, with the boys is I've always said, Hey, um, here's what it's going to take. And if that's really what you want, uh, I can help you. Um, but it's got to be your passion, not my passion. And, and so, um, that's, that's really been really cool for me is that our passions align in their love for baseball. And, and I get a chance to, you know, take them in the cage and, and figure out, you know, they're both very different. And so learning how to, to father and coach them differently uh, has been, a, you know, a challenge at times, but fulfilling at times as well, where, you know, Jackson wants it all. Like, you know, you see something, say something, give me, uh, if you see a mechanical flaw, if you, if you, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't get, easily rattled. Um, and, and Ethan, on the other hand, uh, I had to learn that I had to let him come to me, uh, you know, and, and just keep throwing. And if he gets frustrated, I, I let him come to me if, if, if something feels off because that's just, he doesn't want uh, everything that I see. Uh, it's just, they're very different in, in, in emotions. And so um, that's, that's something I would say is, is figure out how your, co your kids like to be coached, how they like to be fathered um and and I'm, that's something that's it's been a real challenge with four kids is they're all so different and just trying to learn each kid and and uh the most effective way to parent them to push them uh to love on them to encourage them um all the different emotions that our kids need and 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 even as a coach you know and, and, and getting a chance to coach some for, in college is, is figuring out how guys learn uh what's the most effective way to to coach them um, is, is really a fascinating art. I think that, that I've been really, uh, I've really enjoyed trying to, trying to figure out over the last few years. What was the scramble like as a family, the plan to get to Jackson's first game? I believe you, you admitted you had to call in a favor to Kevin Millar. I don't know how he has a private chat. I don't know what you had to give him in exchange for that. But then, then you and the family decided to go from Boston to Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Was that always the plan? Were you just waiting for that first hit and then you were going to go or? Did you yeah. have a plan in place? Um, so, so the story, you know, as you know, it sometimes gets as the further away it gets, the more skewed it gets. But um, the actual story is, is that he called us on, uh, I think it was Tuesday night. Uh, we were having dinner after Ethan's game here in town. And, uh, and we live in Stillwater, Oklahoma, which is about an hour from Oklahoma City and an hour from Tulsa. So we're kind of in the middle. And he called and said, uh, I'm going up. And so, you know, we, we immediately go into, well, how do we, how do we get to Boston uh, tomorrow? And a lot of the commercial flights were already sold out. It was going to be very difficult to get to Boston by, by game time. So um, I called a, a friend of mine, uh, Ken Davidson here in town. He's got a, a plane. It's, it's a small plane, um, but I knew that he might have access to a, a bigger plane. And, and uh, he, he, uh, he said, Matt, I, 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 you won't be able to fit. Uh, your crew in my plane and uh, but I'm going to make a call. Uh, so he called me back and he said, uh, I got good news and bad news. And I said, OK. And he said, the good news is, is there's actually uh, a Falcon, whatever. I don't you know, plane that's going from Oklahoma to Boston tomorrow and there's nobody on it. Uh, it's a, you know, a, a dead leg or whatever they call, you know, that where there's nobody on it. They're going to I don't know what they're going to pick somebody up or or something. He said, and, and you can fit and you guys can take it. Uh, so I'm thinking, what could possibly be the bad news? And he said, the bad news is, is it's leaving at 4.30 tomorrow morning. Uh, so I said, I'm a sleeper. I don't like getting up early. So I, I, I don't know why I even thought about it. I was like, well, okay, well, let me call my wife and, and I'll check and, and I'll get back to you. And, and I called her and she's like, I mean, we don't have any choice. Of course, take it. Uh, so uh, I called him back and I said, Ken, we'll, we'll be there at 4.15. And uh, so we got there and, and you know, we... Uh, got the kids up uh, at four and, uh, you know, the, the, the high school coach here said, take Ethan, go. Um, so uh, we loaded up on this plane. We flew, we landed in Boston. Um, I, I was, I, the, the Millar part of it is, is that I text him and I said, Hey, Kevin, we're coming to Boston. I knew he was there for the uh, opening day. And uh, I said, 
uh, you know, about ticket. I was like, you got access, you know, to, to good, t good seats. You know, I, I know the family section in, in Boston is, is up a little higher and kind of behind some poles. And, uh, he said, uh, he said, so he didn't text me back right away. Like he was, I know he, he ended up telling me, you know, he was there to celebrate the, one of their world series championships. And he said, so we ended up buying stub up tickets, uh, that were down close. And then he, you know, he, he texts me, he says, Hey, uncle Kevin's got you, whatever you need. Uh, so he ended up getting us the seats right next to the dugout. So we had four there and then four that we had bought on StubHub and two two behind that. So we were kind of all separate, uh, uh, you know, for the first two games in Boston. And then um, we were headed to Baltimore because we wanted to see, um, you know, the opening day at, at Camden Yards. So uh, we got our, our schedule, our, you know, our flight from from Boston to Baltimore. Um, and, and that's an easy, easy get. So we flew from Boston to Baltimore and, and then – uh, Sunday, uh, Leslie was, my wife was taking the two younger kids and Ethan, they had to get back, uh, for school and, and Ethan had a practice. So, um, I, I decided to stay and, and watch that, uh, Sunday game. And so, uh, I got a chance to see his first hit and they, they had to come back. So, uh, I flew out Sunday night and, and was home around one o'clock in the morning and, and, uh, back with the kids on Monday for school and, and all that. So that's kind of how it all went. And, and, uh, it was, it was great. It was just, you know, it was, it was a, a whirlwind of a couple of days. We will get back into our continuing conversation with Jackson holidays. Daddy's also known as the former NL batting champ, Matt holiday here on the Adam Jones podcast. But first a word from our sponsors. The Adam Jones Podcast is brought to you by our friends at The Wineman Company. Everyone knows Green Mount Station in Hampstead, but did you know that at Green Mount Station you can bet seven days a week just like you're at the track? With in-person teller windows and state-of-the-art touchscreen kiosks. And with Green Mount Station's brand new Bet Park sports book, you can bet on all other sports as well, wherever you are in Maryland. Spreads, money lines, live bets, props, parlays, and teasers. The Bet Park's Maryland mobile app is now live for Apple and Android devices, so you'll never miss your next big score. Just search for Bet Park. Parks MD in the Apple App Store or on Google Play. And for a limited time, 21 and over Adam Jones podcast listeners can get a $75 gift card to Greenmount Station simply for opening a new account with promo code GMS and a minimum $50 initial deposit. $75 gift card for new users in Maryland only. 21 and over only. Please play responsibly. For help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. The Adam Jones podcast is brought to you by Jimmy's Famous Seafood, Charm City's favorite crab cake destination. Local sports fan? Experience the ultimate pregame party at the tailgate. Cheer on the Ravens with iconic live performances, an open bar, and mouth-watering eats. Can't make it? No worries. Bring the same food that caught the attention of the Food Network right to your doorstep. Shipping East Coast recipes nationwide. Jimmy's Famous Seafood is the official sponsor of the guests appearing on the Adam Jones Podcast. Play the Maryland Lottery. Because fun looks good on you. Right now, play our exciting new multiplier scratch-offs for a chance to win up to two million dollars. Come and get your fun. Come and get your fun. If you received ERC funds, listen closely. The IRS has 10 years to audit your claim, but you only have until March 22nd to get taxpayer relief, and the clock is ticking. If you're losing sleep over a possible audit, we'll review your claim. If you made a filing error, we'll set things right. If you're being audited, we'll provide expert representation. The IRS Voluntary Disclosure Program ends March 22nd. You deserve peace of mind. Visit SaveMyERC.com to schedule a consultation today. That's SaveMyERC.com. Effective Solutions, your one-stop shop for commercial contracting. Everything from excavation and site development to emergency remediation and restoration. Effective Solutions specializes in many forms of commercial and mixed-use construction. With a dedicated staff and a commitment to quality, Effective Solutions delivers every time. There are a lot of ways to make whiskey, but there's only one way to make Jack Daniels. At Jack Daniels, they charcoal mellow every drop, only using water from Cave Spring Hollow in Tennessee. When you make your own label, you make everything else yours too. But we don't need to tell you that, do we? Make it count. Jack Daniels. Please drink responsibly. Tennessee whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume. Jack Daniel Distillery, Lynchburg, Tennessee. Jack Daniels and Old Number 7 are registered trademarks. 2022 Jack Daniels, all rights reserved. The Adam Jones Podcast welcomes Relief Shop. 
Shop Maryland's largest adult use and medical cannabis menu located at 1114 Cathedral Street in Baltimore with medical delivery available throughout Maryland seven days a week only at Relief Shop. Your fun awaits at Hollywood Casino Perryville. Feed the whole crew with something for everyone from cheesesteaks to crab cake sandwiches. Plus, ask how you can get a $15 dining credit. Get in on the gaming action with the hottest slots and your favorite table games like blackjack, roulette, and poker. Free live shows every Friday and Saturday. Come experience non-stop fun and excitement only at Hollywood Casino Perryville. Hey, you work hard, I work hard, and we all like to save money. That's why we need the Royal Farms Rofo Rewards app to get more value for our hard-earned money. With the app, you earn royalty points on every purchase, can place mobile orders for quick pickup, plus a discount at the gas pump with Rofo Pay. We all like to save money. And with the Rofo Rewards app, we do. Real fresh, real fast. Royal Farms. It's the perfect time to check out a spacious and reliable new Toyota SUV. Like a RAV4, with available all-wheel drive and plenty of cargo space, you'll go from errands to adventures in no time. Plus, available features like wireless charging will keep you connected. Or check out a Highlander with seating for up to eight. It's a hub for family adventure. Your Toyota dealer is getting new vehicles in stock regularly. So don't wait. Find deals on a RAV4 or Highlander at buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Let's get back into it. Our continuing conversation with former All-Star and Jackson Holiday's dad. He is Matt Holiday, only on the Adam Jones Podcast. I want to talk about your wife. How I mean, her whole life has been predicated to baseball and kids. Is she going to go out and watch her baby play? I mean, it's her oldest. That is yeah. still her baby. She's always mm-hmm. going to be a baby child. But is she going to go out and follow you like as she followed uh, she gonna follow us, say Jackson, as she followed you just a little bit. Well, we'll, we'll try to get there as much as we can. Um, you know, we have three other kids, and and uh, and our our youngest is ten, and then you know our daughter is is fourteen, and then uh, Ethan seventeen. So we have a full schedule of of summer uh, baseball events and all the stuff that the younger two are doing, and um, so we're gonna be on the move. Uh, trying to get to as many games uh, as possible. Jackson, you know, the Orioles play in Kansas City this weekend. So I'm going to drive up there, I think, on Friday, which is about a four and a half hour drive. So I'll drive up to Kansas City and um, we're just going to make it work. You know, we, we're used to this. Uh, she's used to this. Uh, she says she could be a traveling secretary, you know, for any MLB team of all the, all the scheduling she's done and, and all the travel she's done over the years. But uh, he's still her baby, and every time, uh, you know, he he doesn't get a hit, uh, I can tell I'm, I'm I, you know, I might have to make her, you know, I think it's even harder on her with Jackson than it was with me, uh, you know, as far as uh, she wants him to do do well. So um, she's she's great. She's a veteran of of this lifestyle and and uh, used to it. So uh, to answer your question, we're gonna we'll be on the fly. We'll be here and there and trying to make every everything work. Uh, for all the kids and and uh, be be a, be with everybody as much as we can. I want to know as a father of a major league player, but also being a damn good major league player yourself. How do you separate that? Like you, obviously, you can have great conversations with your son on baseball terms. We can talk as men as as professionals, and also father son. How do you separate that? Because mm-hmm. there's going to be times where he's going to need you mm-hmm. in a different way. And like, how do you balance those? those uh separate emotions yeah i I think just being uh overly communicative about what he needs i i I text him a lot like hey look if you need me uh to come for baseball i'm happy to come and 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 help you i've obviously watched his swing since he was two years old and 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 know um kind of when he gets into a rut what he's doing i said you know but he has great coaches with the orioles and um i I just want to be whatever he needs me to be. And I, I think communicating that um, if he just needs me to come to, to hang out, to be around, if he's on a you know a road trip or whatever, um, I, I, I just want him to know that I, I can be whatever he needs me to be. And if that's coach, great. If that's just dad, great. Um, and I think that we've had a great relationship in that way um, of just, just letting him talk and then trying to read what he's trying to say if he's not being – very direct with with what he's what he's uh what he needs um and so I, I think that you know i have a few questions that i can ask him that are you know just kind of basics like how you feel and how's your swing feel if he says good then i'm good 
um, you know, sometimes you'll say, you know, I feel a little off or, you know, something doesn't feel right. Uh, then that kind of opens the door to, to talk about uh, some baseball things or some mechanical things or, or things like that. But um, he's a very mature kid. Um, so I, I kind of just try to read, you know, his body language or his tone and, and just try to figure out, you know, where I can serve him best as dad and, and uh, you know, if he needs some coaching or whatever, or, you know, uh, maybe just one tip, as you know, as a hitter, sometimes you just need something else to think about, you know, just one little thing might release, you know, some of the, the tension of, of you're not sure what's wrong and you just need somebody to say, Hey, when you're going good, this is what you're doing. This is what it looks like. And, and sometimes that may be all you need. And, and so, um, just trying to, as, as you know, a hitting coach can be just sometimes just, uh, a, a word, a thought, an encouragement, um, and, and, and kind of gets you back going. So, uh, just trying to, trying to read him and, and be the best I can at, at uh, at the, being a dad and, 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 and trying to help him with baseball as well. Well, just from covering him, his approach has been extremely professional, which is a credit to you. And Adam and I have talked about this in the past, and you know this as a former major leaguer. It's tougher to stay in the major leagues than to make it. Have you had that conversation with him? And he's surrounded, that you mm -hmm. mentioned earlier in the podcast, by a great nucleus mm -hmm. on this team, a young mm -hmm. nucleus with a lot of guys that he's familiar with playing at a lower level. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the one thing, you know, is, as, as I was Jackson and I've talked about, you have to process it. You know, you can't chase the results. You know, obviously it's hard. Uh, you want the hits. You want, you know, with the production, you want the doubles, you want the, you know, the, the extra base hits, but you have to really, really stick to the process. And then that's, you know, every day, put your work in, you know, put the time in to do your work and trust that you can go out and just compete. And you can't dwell on uh, your, you know, yesterday or, you know, the, the last few days, every day is new and, and you look forward and you, you know, you trust that you've put in the time in the cage and, and you trust that you've put in the time, um, over, over your, your, your life that, uh, you, you can't, you can't think about those things and you just really have to, to, to stay in the moment. Um, I think, as you said, they have a really good young team. And so you have guys to lean on like Gunner and Adley who have, have experienced some of the same things that Jackson's experienced. And, and, it, you know, I, I, you know, Gunner got off to a, a, a bit of a rough start last year and was easy, you know, overcame it, won the rookie of the year. And now he's, you know, a, a, one of the top players in the league and, and, uh, and, and thriving. So he's got guys to lean on. They're winning. Uh, he doesn't have to be the focal point of the team. He can, you know, they can bat him eighth and ninth and, and he can, uh, he can go out and play good defense and run the bases and, 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 and do things like that. Uh, so I, I think that that's a good thing, but as you said, it's, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a tough league. It's, it's one thing to get there. It's another thing to, to, to play well and, and to be an everyday guy. And, and, but I, you know, I have to, to remind him, you know, he's 20 years old. He got drafted 18 months ago. Um, he's, he's, uh, he, he's, he expects a lot out of himself, which is great. Um, he expects to be good. He expects to be one of the best players and, and that's all good. But, um, you know, this is one of those times where he's had a little bit of adversity and, you know, he hasn't had a ton of that a, a, as a player yet. And so, um, I, as Adam knows, there's, there's slumps and you, it's, there's no sloth landing spots in the major leagues. Like every day is a challenge. Every day is somebody else who's the best in the world at pitching and you got to go out there and compete. And yesterday has nothing to do with today. And you, there's nothing you can do about your start. You're one for whatever it is. We've all been there. I mean, we've all had one for 25s. And and they're just a blip in the radar when you get done with your career. Um, so uh, just reminding him of that and that he has everything that it takes. He, he played really well in spring training against the best in the world. I mean, um, you know, he was facing all the best pitchers in the league. He was starting those games. So he can do it. He has, you know, he, he can, he's got all the skills he needs. Just, you know, he just got to get going a little bit. You mentioned your son, Ethan, class of 26, I believe. 25. Uh, yeah. 25? He's, a, he's, a, he's yeah. a junior. Yeah. The head of it. The head of it. Like, mm -hmm. It's an absolute stud. Um, watching your kids play, especially at such a high level, do you ever get nervous for them? Just like, you know, hey, like you want it more than them or you just sit back and you have this calmness about you that, you know, I can just let my kids go with the flow. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I ha uh, have a, a perspective that 
I, I hope is is an advantage. You know, having played at the highest level and and know how hard baseball is, and and uh, I, I hope to offer them a perspective of somebody who's had experience doing it. Um, and so I, I do get uh, anxious for them to, or for you know, I think you want your kids to succeed because you know how bad they want it. It's not something where it looks how it looks on me. Uh, I just, you know, I get anxious because I, I want them to do well because I know how much it means to them. Um, but uh, I, I never want them to feel like uh, any pressure from me because there's enough nowadays with social media and people, you know, there's constant chatter. Um, it's it's covered now more than it ever has been. Uh, and, and so I just want home and dad and mom to be a safe place where there's no we're not judging them on their performance no one cares whether they got two hits or no hits or two home runs or they're 0 for 25 it it it, it doesn't change the dynamic of the family um we we still eat the same we still talk we still laugh we still enjoy each other the same whether they're killing it on the field or they're struggling like crazy and so I think that's our job as parents to create an environment where uh, we're not they're they're not judged based on on their performance and and I think that that's that's and nowadays in this world they need that more than anything else because um, like I said earlier with social media and and everybody has a voice and everybody has an opinion and um, it's hard to, it's hard to hide from those things nowadays like with us I feel like in, in the prime of our career outside of sports radio um, and and in the newspaper. There wasn't a ton of there wasn't a ton of chatter and and there wasn't a you could easily keep your circle small and ignore the noise when you were struggling or ignore the noise when you were doing great um you know you you're, you're neither you know most of the time you're neither at your best or you're neither at your worst you're usually somewhere in the between um and so i think nowadays it's even more important uh that they find their their value is particularly with their family it's not related to their performance You've spoken on to just amazing character of your kids, and that is a tribute to you and your and your wife. I want to talk about Jackson as a baseball player. Obviously, he's a five-tool stud. Watching him from age two to now, what do you think his greatest attribute between the lines will be? I, I think the the overall um, his overall game and, and being able to help a team win uh, and his acumen of knowing how to run the bases, go first to third, uh, make a play, make the right play on defense, uh, you know, make sure that if the guy's on second, get him over. Like playing the game, he's been around the game forever. I think he can do a lot of things to help you win games. Um, I, I think his – his I think he has a great swing. I think fundamentally, you know, particularly when he's – when he's going good, his, his swing fundamentally is, is really good and, and he can – he can do uh, damage and 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 hit extra base hits and get on base and walk and uh, be a very good offensive player. But I think even since he was a little kid, uh, he's been a winning player and he thinks the he thinks the game uh, in a winning way. Um, he's more concerned about uh, whatever it takes to help the team win than he is necessarily like trying to be um, He Man or you know or Superman and, and try to try to, you know, win the game every time. And so I, I think that that's the one thing that he's always been great at um, is just watching him play the game and, and do a lot of different things. All right. I think I know the answer to this question, but in totality, I want to ask it our final question for you. Uh, did you have a T-shirt giveaway on your first major league home game when you debuted as a major leaguer like your son did? What do you recall about your first major league hit? You know, um, I uh, I did not. Uh, in fact, I don't think I ever had a shirt. Uh, and in 15 years, I don't think they ever made a shirt about me. Uh, I, I remember, uh, you know, my 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 initial call up. Uh, I thought I was going to make the team with the Rockies in 2004. I had a great spring training. Um, didn't end up making it. And and then uh, Larry Walker and Preston Wilson uh, both were having some knee issues. And I think it was Preston went on the DL. And uh, we were in Memphis. I had played only six games in AAA. 
um, and and got the call from the manager on the hotel phone. Uh, that, that tells you that uh, yeah. it goes goes back how far how far it was. Um, but uh, he called me and, and said uh, uh, Marv Foley was his name, uh, or he still is his name. Um, he called me and said uh, you're going uh, to the major league. So my first initial call, obviously, was my wife, who, who was uh, I think she was back in, in Oklahoma at the time, and. Uh, I remember calling her, no answer, no answer, no answer. And I'm thinking, good gosh, I mean, answer the phone. Like, I, this is, you know, the most exciting news I've ever, I've ever gotten as a, you know, as, as a player. And so I ended up calling my parents because I, you know, I had to tell somebody and then she called me back and, and she says, what, I mean, what do you want? I said, I'm going to the major <laughs> leagues. Or she said, what do you want? I'm watching the bachelor. And I'm like, oh, that's about right. <laughs> so, uh, that was my initial, uh, my initial call up, uh, I flew to Denver. Uh, actually, she was in Colorado Springs because that was, that was where our AAA was. So I flew it to Denver. She picked me up at the Denver airport. We went straight to Coors Field. I didn't, it was a day game, so I didn't end up playing that day. The next game was in St. Louis. Um, so we, after the game, we flew to St. Louis. I started the next game in St. Louis. So my debut was in, in the old Bush Stadium. Um, and, and so it was, uh, it was pretty cool. I didn't. I didn't get a hit that day either. I didn't get a hit the second day. Uh, I had the. Uh, I had the, uh, the. Oh gosh, you know, I better get a hit soon, or else I'm, I would be headed back to Colorado Springs. Uh, I got three hits the the third day against Woody Williams, and and uh, you know, I, I kind of got it going from there, and, and ended up uh, staying. And uh, even when Larry and Preston came back, we kind of went in. Jeremy Burnett was our other outfielder. We went into like a four outfielder rotation, and then. Ultimately, they traded Larry uh, around the deadline um, and, and became, you know, an everyday outfielder for the Rockies. And, and so that's kind of how it went. And as I say, the rest is just history. <laughs> Matt, we, we really appreciate you coming on. It was an awesome conversation. Thanks for taking the time. Yeah, my pleasure. I enjoy you guys' show and appreciate you guys appreciate having me on. Let's move along. It's our For the Birds segment, always presented by our friends at the Maryland Lottery. Hey, folks, when you play the Maryland Lottery, set limits. Never play when you're stressed and know your odds of winning. To learn more, simply visit mdlottery.com slash play responsibly. Must be 18 years or older to play. Pitchers, all the sun here, are not fond of the pitch clock, Adam. And in year number two, I've never heard much of it last season, to be honest, but it seems like speeding up the game, <clears throat> speeding up these arm injuries, according to some pitchers out there, your reaction to what some of these pitchers have had to say, whether it be Corbin Burns or Garrett Cole. Um, the pitchers, have all, there's a lot of pitchers that have always worked fast. There's a lot of people that are pay simple. There's a lot of people that are real human rain delays. I played behind Steve Traxel. Love you, Steve game was four hours. I uh, also played behind pitchers that worked really quick, like Miguel Gonzalez, who really let's get in and out, Mark Burley. Um, the thing is, and, and I think Verlander hit on it perfectly, is each pitch is magnified. It has to be perfect. It has to be crisp. You're breaking the pitch. It. It's not, let me get through this lineup one time. Let me go through this. It's max effort. Doesn't I don't care who you are. Max effort is not good on your body. Also, Go back to long toss. I don't see people long tossing anymore. What I do see is people crow hopping into these nets with heavy balls. Again, however anybody trains, I respect it. However, you know, whatever makes you feel better. But the longevity of this game has always been predicated on the simplest of things. Long toss and running poles. Run, stretch, throw. That's how baseball players have played 15, 20 years. That's what I did for 14 years, 19 professionally. Run, stretch, and throw. So it, it's a coincidence, in your opinion, that these are occurring. I, no, I'm not saying it's a coincidence because okay. when you are when you are saying max effort every single pitch, I talked to a guy like Verlander who pitched from old. He's been in a big league. Justin or Ben? Justin, right? Uh, Justin, not Ben. Ju <laughs> yeah, Justin. Ben took him deep, but Justin, he's pitched from 06 into this new era, so he's pitched this entire time and seen everything change, and. He's seen it go from max effort. Justin Verlander was always 91, 93 first couple innings. All right, in the fifth inning, now he's going to get real nasty. Now it's first pitch that pitchers throw. Their first pitch is the nastiest pitch of the game. Eighth pitch is a bastard slider that they're breaking off. It's it, it's When you do max effort all the time, especially as a pitcher, it's not good for your arm. It doesn't, it doesn't matter who you are. You can say the pitch clock, but there's been guys that have pitched fast and on, a, on a pace since the game has always been played. 
And there's always so there's been slow people. Kenley Jansen had, had to improve. He was arguably the slowest in the game at 30 seconds. He had to improve. So it's like you can't blame it on that. You got to blame it on every pitch is being max effort rather than, hey, let me get through this lineup once or twice. But you don't because nobody gets in the lineup three times except a very selected few aces. Bringing it closer to home, the Orioles dealing with some arm injuries this week. Suarez had to come in as an emergency starter. Tyler Wells going down. The good news is Bradish is back on the rehab uh, in Bowie and, and had a, from all accounts, decent first start. So that's encouraging. But what are the Orioles to do right now with these pitching woes? Obviously, it's great that Bradish is back out there. He says he's feeling good. That's a big, big, big positive. Uh, Suarez, who threw, we had a... Uh, it's crazy. We played in Japan. I played, we were next door neighbors with his brother. He came in town They cooked some food. I smelled it through the door. I went over there. Poppy was up some presidentes, a little bit of, uh, some Japanese whiskey. And we had a good time, but, um, I just think that, uh, it, it just takes time for these arm injuries. You have to be patient with it. Uh, obviously these are competitors who want to get back out there means wants to get back out there. But if you just maintain what the Orioles are doing now, just maintain playing good baseball, like the Yankees are doing until Cole gets back. If the Orioles do the same thing until you get Bradish, until you get Means, that that's your trade in a way. You know, you're getting a, you're getting big pieces back. So it's just a matter of being patient. I know people don't like that in, in baseball because we want it now, we want it yesterday. But it's a 162 game season. I'd rather see both these guys pitch me 15 great starts, even 10 great starts, or over um, maybe three, and then he's got to go on the DL and then stuff like that. So I think just be patient. Just be patient. All right. Well, you were pretty patient with an airline. Let's move beyond Baltimore, where you travel sometimes, our national and sometimes international perspective. It's brought to you by not that airline. It's brought to you by Relief Medical Marijuana Dispensary, where they go above and beyond to help the customer. Unlike Unset Airline, you were traveling to the U.S. this past week uh, for yeah. the MLB Network for Jackie Robinson Day. You were part of a Big Apple or, I guess, close to Big Apple, Secaucus, New Jersey broadcast. Tell us about that experience with Chris Young and CC Sabathia. I enjoyed watching it. I appreciate it. It was great. I mean, Secaucus, ooh, that's a tough one right there. That's yeah. a tough place. Yeah. But, I, but I see, I see ooh, it's tough. I got to meet your friend Adam, who was great. We got to uh, talk to you. What up, uh, Slack? No, it, what a great uh, platform. Obviously, CC has been spearheading so many great projects. You heard about talking about Rickwood, and we got the uh, Negro League Hall of Fame, East West game. It's like CC has been the spearhead of a lot of things going forward in the last four or five years. And there's so much more. And uh, just to be asked, him and Chris Young asked me. And of course, there's my brothers in this game and outside this game. So anytime I get to uh, be on that platform, speaking of Jackie Robinson, of course, that's a no brainer. And uh, we got to play some golf. It wasn't good golf, but we got to play golf. And uh, but again, to be out there, be on that platform, getting having uh i guess the bigger audience and broader audience hear my opinions on things like that different markets who tuning into mlb network uh it, it got they got to hear my perspective and as opposed to uh not hearing minds as much i guess through certain platforms so it was good it was good to be on the national broadcast and uh i really enjoyed it did you get a chance to talk to the commissioner and when can we expect him to be on the podcast uh, the commissioner, I don't know if he does uh, podcasts. Uh, I have not uh, heard him do any podcasts. I'm I might be able to find one he was on and, and show oh. you. Okay, that'd be good. But, I mean, he's very selective in, in, in his media. And Mr. 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 Commissioner is a very busy man, so I'm not going to ask him to join our podcast. Maybe the deputy commissioner. He's fun. All right, well. We'll try one of the two, if not all of the <laughs> above. Uh, you did fly business class. I don't know if you paid for it. I was suspicious. I would suspect baseball paid for it is, is my presumption. But anyway, you posted a picture of a dog in business class. Again, presumptions or assumptions. You know what happens when you make those. It was my assumption that that dog was sitting next to you in business class, and I stand corrected. I would have had the greatest flight in the world if that dog was sitting next to me. I'm telling you, that would have been amazing. Who but pays for that? The, the owner. I mean, people, my kids fly business class, and people just be walk, I know they be walking by us. They be yeah. like, "Yeah, but they can sit their little butts back in the normal seat and be able." They like, oh, "I can't lay down, I can't sleep." But I see people walking by, just like mm. with their eyes. I'm like, "You could have paid for it. You got to yell at me." Uh, <laughs> but no, um, yeah, I'm fortunate enough to work with MLB, and they take care of my travel and all that. So it's a blessing. Uh, it's really good to um, get status on the airlines. Uh, us and 
united. That's who it was. It wasn't their fault. They got us. They got me home safely. But uh, hey, let's update me to a Polaris group or something like that, or one of them one uh, K something high up to where I could just go to the lounges uh, willy nilly. Well, I'm glad you're all united now. <laughs> you and the airline, and uh, check out Adam's social media for all the pictures posted that we're talking about here on the YouTube version of the podcast. All right, speaking of these social media posts, let's get to socially speaking. It's apropos. This is where we answer a tweet or X post or social media posts. And you earn a chance to win a $50 gift card from Lido Pizza, who is the proud partner of the Baltimore Orioles. Now, last week, we had architect Janet Marie Smith on the podcast, and we asked the Camden Yards designer about the potential for someone ever to hit the warehouse at the yard. You tweeted it out. We are at Adam Jones Pod on all the social media platforms, or you can email us directly, the Adam Jones Pod at gmail.com. The great Brian Burke at Burke72, mm -hmm. he reached out via X saying, Westy, his oppo power opposite field is obvious, absolutely nuts. Uh, I just don't think anyone's going to ever hit that wall on the warehouse. A right handed hitter? An opposite right field. Hitter. Opposite field, yes. A right handed. If no lefty has done it, you think a righty's going to do it. <laughs> That's my answer to that. I wish people who aren't watching <laughs> on YouTube, please turn on YouTube to watch his face and his palms as I'm reading. I, I, you got the furthest, the furthest ball I've ever seen a right hander hit was like it would have been probably like Manny Ramirez or something going in like maybe on maybe like in right center up on the on that part. I mean, man, uh, no. West, no, hell no. Thank you. I agree. Unfortunately, hell no, righty, no righty, no righty will ever go that. It's just, it's just way too far. No. Also, we got this from Orioles Gatekeeper. He's on X at Relish Daddy. I do like that handle. Kerstead has mutant power. He's hit some big blasts. I think the more he develops, gets bigger and stronger, he could be your guy. 100% it's going to be a lefty, obviously. Um, but there's a few guys I think that if they get a pitch, certain pitch, maybe uh, you know a, a changeup down and in, a, a slider down and in, a hard cutter down and in to where – the, the a fastball is harder to hit that far, but if they get something that ha already has some spin that they can get behind, obviously you see how far and how hard Gunner hits the ball. I think he's probably uh, high up on the list first as he's been close. Santander, again, if you get one of them, uh, some that's spinning down and in, I think that he can get it. Um, you got Kerstad, you got Stowers, you got some lefties that I think with some tremendous pop of Hearn. If he runs into one that's down and in, again, it's, I think it's, it, it's going to take a spinning ball, not just a four-seamer, it's going to take something, a slider, a cutter, something that uh, that has a little bit more spin on it to where they can fly. But like I said, they made uh, shatterproof windows. Yeah, they, they probably didn't. They probably spent too much money on that. Unnecessary. Yeah. We do appreciate yeah, all the experience. input. All the input <laughs> at Adam Jones Pod. Positive, negative. It doesn't matter. You qualify for that Lido gift card. One other social media post we wanted to acknowledge. The Orioles social media department this past week put out this fabulous video. Let's take a look if you haven't seen it. I'm not going to tell them. Are you going to tell them? Not me. I'm new here. I'll tell them. Excuse me, sir. Your office is up there now. <laughs> I don't know how many takes that <laughs> took, but that was spectacular. If you weren't watching on YouTube, that was the owner, David Rubenstein, with the manager, Brandon Hyde, Gunnar Henderson, and, of course, Cal Ripken seated out there behind a desk at shortstop. I think it was absolutely epic, and I think that – with the news that Ripken is involved with the ownership, it's just phenomenal. Obviously, he is the, still, the, to me, the face of baseball in Baltimore. Uh, and he's uh, hopefully the lead catalyst in this new wave of what's going forward with the organization and the city and the projects that are possible. He's still young enough to where he can see a lot of these things through. And I hope that he is uh, on board with bringing a championship to Baltimore. He won one early in his career, and it's been such a long time, 40 years. So I hope that... Uh, he is on board to bringing a championship to Baltimore. Great to have him back in the fold. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Hey, we want to thank our sponsors. Please go out and support the following because they support us.
The Adam Jones Podcast is brought to you by our friends at the Weinman Company. Everyone knows Green Mount Station in Hampstead, but did you know that at Green Mount Station you can bet seven days a week just like you're at the track? With in-person teller windows and state-of-the-art touchscreen kiosks. And with Green Mount Station's brand new Bet Park sports book, you can bet on all other sports as well, wherever you are in Maryland. Spreads, money lines, live bets, props, parlays, and teasers. The Bet Park's Maryland mobile app is now live for Apple and Android devices, so you'll never miss your next big score. Just search for Bet Park. Parks MD in the Apple App Store or on Google Play. And for a limited time, 21 and over Adam Jones podcast listeners can get a $75 gift card to Greenmount Station simply for opening a new account with promo code GMS and a minimum $50 initial deposit. $75 gift card for new users in Maryland only. 21 and over only. Please play responsibly. For help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. The Adam Jones podcast is brought to you by Jimmy's Famous Seafood, Charm City's favorite crab cake destination. Local sports fan? Experience the ultimate pregame party at the tailgate. Cheer on the Ravens with iconic live performances, an open bar, and mouth-watering eats. Can't make it? No worries. Bring the same food that caught the attention of the Food Network right to your doorstep. Shipping East Coast recipes nationwide. Jimmy's Famous Seafood is the official sponsor of the guests appearing on the Adam Jones Podcast. Play the Maryland Lottery. Because fun looks good on you. Right now, play our exciting new multiplier scratch-offs for a chance to win up to two million dollars. Come and get your fun. Come and get your fun. If you received ERC funds, listen closely. The IRS has 10 years to audit your claim, but you only have until March 22nd to get taxpayer relief, and the clock is ticking. If you're losing sleep over a possible audit, we'll review your claim. If you made a filing error, we'll set things right. If you're being audited, we'll provide expert representation. The IRS Voluntary Disclosure Program ends March 22nd. You deserve peace of mind. Visit SaveMyERC.com to schedule a consultation today. That's SaveMyERC.com. Effective Solutions, your one-stop shop for commercial contracting. Everything from excavation and site development to emergency remediation and restoration. Effective Solutions specializes in many forms of commercial and mixed-use construction. With a dedicated staff and a commitment to quality, Effective Solutions delivers every time. There are a lot of ways to make whiskey, but there's only one way to make Jack Daniels. At Jack Daniels, they charcoal mellow every drop, only using water from Cave Spring Hollow in Tennessee. When you make your own label, you make everything else yours too. But we don't need to tell you that, do we? Make it count. Jack Daniels. Please drink responsibly. Tennessee whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume. Jack Daniel Distillery, Lynchburg, Tennessee. Jack Daniels and Old Number 7 are registered trademarks 2022. Jack Daniels, all rights reserved. The Adam Jones Podcast welcomes Relief Shop. Shop Maryland's largest adult use and medical cannabis menu located at 1114 Cathedral Street in Baltimore with medical delivery available throughout Maryland seven days a week only at Relief Shop. Your fun awaits at Hollywood Casino Perryville. Feed the whole crew with something for everyone from cheesesteaks to crab cake sandwiches. Plus, ask how you can get a $15 dining credit. Get in on the gaming action with the hottest slots and your favorite table games like blackjack, roulette, and poker. Free live shows every Friday and Saturday. Come experience non-stop fun and excitement only at Hollywood Casino Perryville. Hey, you work hard, I work hard, and we all like to save money. That's why we need the Royal Farms Rofo Rewards app to get more value for our hard-earned money. With the app, you earn royalty points on every purchase, can place mobile orders for quick pickup, plus a discount at the gas pump with Rofo Pay. We all like to save money. And with the Rofo Rewards app, we do. Real fresh, real fast. Royal Farms. It's the perfect time to check out a spacious and reliable new Toyota SUV. Like a RAV4, with available all-wheel drive and plenty of cargo space, you'll go from errands to adventures in no time. Plus, available features like wireless charging will keep you connected. Or check out a Highlander with seating for up to eight. It's a hub for family adventure. Your Toyota dealer is getting new vehicles in stock regularly. So don't wait. Find deals on a RAV4 or Highlander at buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Also, thanks to senior executive producer Chip Franklin for putting this episode together. All I have to say is he's doing it in rapid fashion. Amazing work by Chip this week. Go out and subscribe to the Baltimore Banner, folks. Until next week, be kind, be real, and make sure to be back for next week's episode. A very big-time special guest on the Adam Jones Podcast. (laughs) 